Now, these divergences between price and fundamentals is where big gains are made over time. As Ben Graham said, Mr. Market is a manic depressive. Take advantage of the emotions versus being at the effect. Our last week I want to talk about is REITs and Vernado. This is a very unconventional call. It's certainly not without risk and its position size is according to that. But I think this can be a double plus. And why do I think that? Number one is they've already cut the dividend 43%. Uh, down to a buck fifty, but because the price is so low, it's still yielding ten percent. Uh, so while there's room to cut if needed, um, uh, which is which is which is comforting, um, I'm going to not only get the benefit of having a locked in ten percent yield, but when times improve twenty four to thirty six months out, they're going to normalize that. Um, that dividend back, back up to pre-pandemic levels, maybe 2026, 2027, and I'll wind up with a 20% yield on invested capital every single year in perpetuity, plus uh, probably uh, one and a half to uh, 150 to 200% appreciation over time. And you don't need to look much further. Yes, you, you have $1.8 trillion of maturities and all that stuff coming due, there's going to be another extend and pretend. And if you go back to the full Bill Rudin interview, and you can Google it under Squawk Box Bill Rudin, um, he said there'll be another extend and pretend. And there's no question that they'll do some deviation of that. Why? Because the banks don't want to take back the properties. Why would they want to take that back the properties in a market they can't sell when they could just extend it at favorable terms, keep them marked to you know marked to make believe on their on their books, let the thing resolve itself. And everyone gets back to normal. And I think, you know, like like the SNL crisis, all these things they've learned from history, they just have to work through these situations that way. Because if they act like um, uh, ideologues and, you know, there's no flexibility and everything else, it just flushes everything and it costs them more at the end of the day. So it is what it is. That's the way it's going to work and, uh, and so on. So now what's important about Vornado is that um, if you look at, relative to pre-pandemic levels, 2019 levels, as of the end of 2022, the last reporting period, <coughs> period which they just reported in February, excuse me, <coughs> um, the rental revenues are down just 4.9%. The book value per share is down 16.45%. The funds from operations per share is down 9.74%. And the occupancy rate in their New York City properties, which is the bulk of their portfolio, uh, are down to 90.4% from 91.3% or 9 tenths of 1%. So again, rent down 4.9%, book value 16%, funds from operations 9.74%, occupancy rate less than 1%. And what's the stock price? It's down 75% percent okay 75 percent now these divergences between price and fundamentals is where big gains are made over time as ben graham said mr market is a manic depressive take advantage of the emotions versus being at the effect they already cut the dividend in january 43 percent from 29 levels yield still above 10 percent plenty of room to cut it's trading at a 40 percent discount to book now you can say book is wrong and I, I wouldn't disagree. I mean, you know, talking with experts in the industry, they would say, you know, because of rates, number one, and because of occupancy uncertainty, all of these should have a 40 haircut. Well, the market's already priced that in uh, fully. And that's the beauty of public markets versus private markets. I'm not buying Vernado because I think the pain is over in the private markets. I'm buying Vernado because it's a public equity which tend to bottom before the maximum amount of pain is in, in the private markets. I wouldn't do a private deal today. I would do a public deal. Uh, and, and just like I was buying the S&P uh, and, and we were pounding the table on stocks last October, it's not because we didn't think the economy wasn't going to get worse. It was because we knew in public markets the market bottomed 6 to 12 months before earnings bottom. And I think this case, the same case is true in the case of Vornado. And just to take a look, ladies and gentlemen, um, take a look at this. This is Vornado trading down 
to it's trading at the great financial crisis low levels when when basically banks were going out of business credit was freezing unemployment was spiking the world was ending everything was off a cliff if they didn't take Steve Roth out on a stretcher during the great financial crisis it ain't gonna happen now that I can assure you it'll be bumpy it'll be uh, fits and starts but um, you know this is gonna revert back and, it, and by the way if you look at the 10-year yield today at 328 uh, you're gonna see refinancing rates come down that's number one number two which is a very important point that no one's thinking about this whole nonsense about work from home is changing the world forever uh, I think this is a fallacy that is based on a tightening market. And uh, anecdotally, I was talking to someone who cut, uh, well, a friend of mine was talking to someone who cut 20% of their staff. And he said, look, I would never say this publicly, but the 20% I cut were the 20% that are working from home. And it was an easy decision. And I think you're going to see more and more of that. And as as the unemployment rate goes up, from the lagged effect of the tightening, as we see in the the, the data this week, uh, by the way, you can see here the uh, continuing claims were at 1.8 versus 1.69 expectations, 1.82 versus 1.69, and the jobless claims were over 200,000 again. Initial jobless claims were 228,000. So we're probably going to see that actually reflected in tomorrow's jobs report. Um, the more unemployment ticks up, the more nervous people are going to get about their jobs the more they're going to race into the office and want FaceTime with their boss to protect their job. And this whole thing is of, I, I only work from home. It's game over. Once there's a supply of labor and the employers are back in control, everyone's going to be back in the offices, whether they want to or not. And, um, and uh, the, you know, the smart employers are already doing. That's not to say it won't be three days a week or four days a week. But whether you're coming in one day a week or five days a week, you still have a desk, which means you still need the square footage. And in the case of Vornado, which has the best properties in the best city in the world, um, I think it's just like what we just saw in banking. The big get bigger, like uh, the systemically important banks are going to be the beneficiaries of uh, uh, wrong-minded policy from not backstopping the deposits. The deposits are going to continue to flow into the big systemically important banks until there's an explicit guarantee. Then the, then the pain will stop for the regionals. Uh, the same is going to be true for commercial real estate, just like you saw in the malls. Uh, in you know, a few years ago, everyone was saying the malls are going to blow up. Well, the B and C properties blew up for sure, but the A properties got stronger. Simon is is doing just fine, and um, and and whether through uh, you know, a, basically a retail Armageddon with the pandemic, and they're still still fine. And the same is going to happen with the prime properties, and that's what Vernado is. Um, you know, Vernado is Park Avenue, Madison Avenue, 5th Avenue, 6th Avenue, a little bit of 7th Avenue, some Central Park South, Times Square, Penn Station, Lexington. Simply put, the best properties in the best city in the world. If you think demand is dead for that, there's a whole lot more to worry about than Steve Roth. I can tell you that right now. Um, so that's basically the story there.